How's it going, everyone? Austin Honecker here. I just wanted to come on here for a while and give him a review for All Elite Wrestling's AEW Rampage from four nights ago, which was December 16th, 2022. I gotta say, it was awesome from start to finish. For the matches, match one, it was John Moxley versus Sammy Guevara. That was a great match, but the ending to it, John Moxley went over with the bulldog choke. Well, after the match, John Moxley got on the microphone and cut a promo saying, I told you where I was going to be Friday night, so cowboy, get out here because I'm not waiting all night. So Hangman Page came out and... As Hangman Page came out to the ring, a brawl between John Moxley and Hangman Page ensued, but all the referees and all the security guards had to break it up and everything. Chuck was cool. That was after the match, by the way. Match two, it was Britt Baker versus Sky Blue. That was a great match. But the ending to it, Britt Baker went over with the curb stomp. Now after the match, Britt Baker locked in the lockjaw to Sky Blue. And as that was going on, Hikaru Shida came out and attacked Rebel and Britt Baker with the kendo stick and laid them out. And then a stare down between Hikaru Shida and Jamie Hayter ensued in the ring and everything. That was cool. That was after the match, by the way. Match three, it was Wardlow versus Exodus Prime. That was a squash match, but the ending to it, Wardlow went over with the Powerbomb Symphony. Now, after the match, Wardlow got on the microphone and cut a promo talking about how he wanted to he, he wanted a piece of Samoa Joe and wanted to beat his ass and take the AEW TNT title away from him and everything. And as Wardlow was cutting that promo, Samoa Joe popped up on the Titan Tron and talked about how Wardlow wants a piece of him and everything and talked about how he wasn't going to defend the AEW TNT title in Texas, in the state, in the god awful state of Texas. And everything and and Samoa Joe was talking about how he was going to he was going to give Wardlow a shot at the AEW TNT title at, at when AEW's in Colorado and everything. That was cool. That was after, that that was after the match by the way. And match 4 which was the main event it was Dustin Rhodes and the Best Friends, which are Trent Beretta, Chuck Taylor, and Orange Cassidy versus The Butcher, The Blade, Kip Sabian, and Trent Seven. That was a great match, but the ending to it, Dustin Rhodes and the Best Friends went over because Dustin Rhodes pinned Trent Seven with the Bulldog. That was match four and the main event, by the way. Now, besides the matches, Soraya cut a promo talking about how she was go going after the AEW women's title and talked about how she had a plethora of talent to choose from to be her partner against Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter on the January 11th edition of AEW Dynamite and everything. That was cool. FTR which are Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler, were in the ring cutting a promo talking about how last week sucked and how they let the fans down and everything and talked about how the guns, which are Colton and Austin Gunn, ruined their moment last week and everything and talked about how they were going to fight the guns on on AEW Dynamite special event holiday bash 
and how how they were going to do what Billy Gunn should have done a long time ago was give them an ass whipping and everything. That was cool. Jade Cargill and the baddies, which are Red Velvet and Layla Gray, cut a promo and uh and uh and well Layla Gray was showing Jade Cargill something on fa on her phone and everything, and Red Velvet was having a shitty ass look on her face, and Jade Cargill was talking about how Red Velvet was being salty and everything, and Layla Gray talked about how she wanted to fix Jade Cargill up and everything, and so she did, and then Jade Cargill was talking about how she was gonna go gonna be going after Bow Wow and everything. That was cool. Jim Ross interviewed Preston Vance. Well, Jim Ross brought up about Preston Vance turning his back on the Dark Order and everything, and and the Dark Order, which are Evil Uno, John Silver, Alex Reynolds, and Negative One and everything. And Preston Vance said, For, well, first, Jim, let me ask you a question. Who is your boss? Jim Ross said that would be Mr. Tony Khan. And Preston Vance said, not a 10-year-old child. Jim Ross said no. Then Preston Vance was talking about how he was handpicked by the late great Mr. Brody Lee and everything and talked about how the other members of the Dark Order were not handpicked by the late great Mr. Brody Lee and everything and Preston Vance talked about how the Dark Order weren't really his brothers and everything and talked about how Roosh, Jose, and the rest of LFI were his true brothers and how they all saw poten they all see the same potential in him as the late great Mr. Brody Lee did and everything and 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 Jim Ross brought up about negative one losing the late great Mr. Brody Lee and everything and and uh, talked about how Preston Vance uh, upset negative one and everything and and Preston Vance was saying yeah Jim no kid should ever have to go through losing their parent but within these last couple years negative one has been nothing but a snot nosed brat and my advice to negative one grow up kid and everything that was cool and Mark Henry interviewed Dustin Rhodes and the best and the best friends which are Trent Beretta, Chuck Taylor, Orange Cassidy and Dan Housen and The Butcher, The Blade, Kip Sabian and Trent Seven well Mark Henry brought up about Trent Seven joining in on Kip Sabian on attacking Orange Cassidy after their match for the AEW All-Atlantic title last week on AEW Rampage and everything. And and Trent Seven, and, and Mark Henry asked Trent Seven why. And Trent Seven was saying, why? It's not a matter of why, Mark. It's a matter of me kicking Orange Cassidy's ass. Oss. And Kip Sabian was saying, Yeah, Mark, what Trent said what Trent just said is true. Because in this business, you don't get over with success by putting your hands in your pockets. These hands are meant to me meant to kick ass, not put in your pockets and everything. And then the butcher was talking about how Dustin Rhodes and the best friends need to dial the number 1-800-SEE-YA because he don't like them and everything. And then the Blade was, and then the Blade was talking about how they're gonna slice and die, how they're gonna slice and dice and kick, kick, uh, kick Dustin Rhodes and the best friends' asses and everything. And then Mark Henry said his signature line: "Well, looks like there's been enough talk." Then Dustin, Dustin Rhodes was saying, Now you're not going to let us talk or anything, Mark? 
and and Trent Beretta was saying, yeah, because that 1-800-SEE-YA don't make sense. And Chuck Taylor was talking about, that was Trent Beretta that said that, by the way, but Chuck Taylor was saying that it had not just letters, but numbers and everything, and then Mark Henry finished his signature line. It's time for the main event and everything. Chuck was cool. Now, besides all that, Jim Ross, Tony Schiavone, and Excalibur done commentary throughout the whole show. They done awesome as usual. The referees for the event were Rick Knox, Paul Turner, Bryce Rimsberg, and Stefan Smith. Stefan Smith, excuse me. Stefan Smith refereed the match between John Moxley versus Sammy Guevara. Paul Turner refereed the match between Britt Baker versus Sky Blue. Rick Knox refereed the match between Wardlow versus Exodus Prime. And Bryce Rimsberg refereed the match between Dustin Rhodes and the Best Friends versus. Kip Sabian, The Butcher, The Blade, and Trent Seven. All the referees done awesome as usual. Now, the match card for All Elite Wrestling's AEW Dynamite Special Event Holiday Bash tomorrow night that's been announced so far. It's going to be Jamie Hayter versus Hikaru Shida for the AEW Women's Title. The Death Triangle, which are Pac, Ray Phoenix and Pena El Cerro Miedo versus The Elite, which are Kenny Omega, Matt Jackson, and Nick Jackson in match five of the Best of Seven series in a no disqualification match. And FTR, which are Dex Harwood and Cash Wheeler versus The Guns, which are Colton and Austin Gunn. Now, Besides all that, now besides the matches that have been announced so far, Brian Danielson will be appearing live. Ricky Starks will be appearing live. Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland will be having a face-to-face -face confrontation. And Powerhouse Hobbs will be appearing live. So the match card for All Elite Wrestling's AEW Dynamite special event Holiday Bash tomorrow night. Looks like it's going to be awesome. I can't wait to see it, and I'm looking forward to it. Also, I forgot to add one thing in my All Elite Wrestling's AEW Dynamite's special event Winter is Coming review. Don Callis done guest commentary along with Tony Schiavone, Taz, and Excalibur during the match between the Death Triangle versus the Elite in match four of the Best of Seven series. And I forgot to add that Don Callis done great on guest commentary. But anyway, I just wanted to come on here for a while and give them a review for All Elite Wrestling's AEW Dino... Excuse me. But anyway, I just wanted to come on here for a while and give them a review for All Elite Wrestling's AEW Rampage from four nights ago, which was... December 16th, 2022. Like I said, it was awesome from start to finish. And with that being said, my name is Austin Honaker, and I will catch your ass down the goddamn road. Peace out.